Hi everyone, this is Neil Ryder, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning into my latest video. This is a very complex case. Just to give you a bit of a background, um, the client ha is from up north in England and had visited a couple of local um, earwax removal specialists, but they weren't able to remove the wax. So he came across me on YouTube and decided to visit me in Leicester. Um, he had wax in both ears, but the one that was most troublesome for him was the left ear. And whenever I do a procedure, I always start off with the ear that's causing the patient most symptoms. And you can see, um, this, so this is his left ear, this is the most troublesome ear, and you can just see how narrow his ear canal is. Um, normally, um, when you've got a narrow ear, we still are able to widen the ear ourselves. So we use both the tool that we're inserting in the ear, so in this case the Zollner suction probe, and also the endoscope to retract open the outer part of the ear canal. So the outer part of the ear canal, the outer third, is made up of cartilage, which is quite flexible, uh, it's mobile, it's malleable, so we can typically, in most cases, even if the ear canal is really narrow, stretch it open, but um, as you just saw, it was, it, I just wasn't able to widen it enough to get the instrument in. So what we've got here is the client actually helping me. Um, I've got the client to use his right hand, um, bring his right hand over the back of his head and just pull his um, pinner, so the, the outer part of the ear, the satellite dish, and pull that backwards and slightly upwards. And what that does, not only does it widen the ear canal, but it also straightens it. Um, so this wax is lodged uh, beyond this narrowing. Um, so th at the moment we're probably midpoint um, of the ear canal and this wax is lodged behind. So he's got not only a narrow entrance, but he's got a narrowing of the middle part of his ear canal and the wax has gone beyond that and it's lodged and it's really hard and uh, you can see how dark it is. It's slightly matted, so it's really hard consistency. Um, and at the moment, we've got, we've got the Zolner suction probe there, but we're not getting much of a suction grip because there's nothing to grip onto. It's the, so the surface of the wax is it's flat um, and it's also um, smooth. So sometimes you want a bit of um, coarseness on that, so you're getting a bit of grip. Um, so probably within a minute of the procedure, I decided just to put some drops in. You can just see how narrow that is. You can um, barely just get the instrument through there. Um, so let that soak for a few minutes and um, try again. And again, it's, even though the client is helping me here by pulling his ear open, stretching it, it's still quite a job getting the instrument into the ear. And just at the top, the roof, and um, the drops are slightly softened this top bit where I can get a bit of a grip. You can just see that wax wriggle um, around slightly, but um, the canal itself, the ear canal, it's almost engulfed itself uh, around this wax. Um, it doesn't want to let it go. Uh, it's going to put up a big fight for me to remove this. Um, so it's a bit blurry there, and the reason for that is whenever you use drops, um, the drops coat the cilia, the outer hairs in the ear canal. So when you put in the endoscope through the hairs, it, it can make it a bit blurry and greasy. Uh, and also, when you put drops in someone's ears, when you're suctioning, um, you're suctioning some of those drops back out, um, so it does get a bit blurry. But you can just see how impacted that is. It's a dark colour. At the bottom, it's slightly softer. So what I'm trying to do here is just lift this up and loosen it from the canal wall. You can see I'm beginning to mobilize this plug of wax so I'm able to loosen it from the canal wall but this wax extends from halfway down his ear canal right to his, his eardrum and it has been impacted. Uh, the client denies the use of cotton buds um, quite often when you've got wax this medial so quite deep uh, it's either due to the misuse of cotton swabs or q-tips or cotton buds or they wear earbuds or wear hearing aids but I think in this cl particular client it's just his ear anatomy the ear anatomy is so narrow not only at the entrance but midpoint where the wax can't naturally migrate and as the wax builds up you're getting layers of wax um, building up behind the outer layer so it's going it's building up more medially as opposed to coming out naturally. Again, it's really tough here because we're, we're having to um, 
extract. Um, so beyond this narrowing, the ear canal widens again, say, and this wax has filled up that widened part of the ear canal. So we're trying to bring forward a really hard, solid piece of wax through a, a narrower aperture. So you can imagine how difficult that is. Um, so I've decided to use an ear hook. Um, it's, again, it's the wax is so engulfed, it's so tight. I'm much bringing it that the roof, so the top part, the superior aspect of the wax slightly forward. I'm just able to um, get the hook in behind, but we can't go too far in because um, we've got to be careful not to make contact with the bony part of the ear canal, which is the inner two thirds, which is really sensitive. You've got a thin layer of skin, which is approximately 0.1 millimeters in thickness only coating the bony part of the ear canal. So it can become very sensitive if you come in contact with that. And also we've just got to be careful that we don't get the hook in too far. So we make contact with the eardrum. Also, whenever you use hooks and jobs and horns in this case, uh, with a really hard solid piece of wax that's lodged, you run the risk of actually pushing this um, solid piece of wax further in uh, because you can't penetrate into the wax to bring it forward. So it can sometimes have adverse effects when you use jobs and horns and ear hooks. It can, as I said, push the wax, lodge it further in because although you're trying to extract it forwards, when you're kind of trying to dig into the wax or getting behind it because it's so solid, it can push it further in. And as you saw there, the hook in Jobson Horn wasn't really beneficial at all. So I've just gone back in with the, um, the standard size Zolna suction probe. Uh, you could use a fine end gorge because that would be narrower and you can get access to the ear, but it just wouldn't be powerful enough for this. The wax is it's too impacted, too hard. Got a piece, a small piece of wax out as you saw before. But you can just see how dry, so despite putting drops in, and I, I let it rest for about five minutes, and it's still extremely dry and impacted and hard wax there, but it's a bit loose. Um, that's on the anterior wall, so the front part of the ear canal, but obviously quite medial, quite deep. And I'm just trying to bring this down, because as I said, the canal is it's engulfed itself around the wax. So I'm just trying to bring this wax through that narrowing where it's trying to trap it And again, I must add, the client is still giving a helping hand here. It's, it's um, expanding and widening and straightening the ear canal for me. And as I say, it's not very often we have to get clients to do that, but he was doing very well. Um, his hand is very still. Uh, again, I just thought I'd try again with the ear hook because I just wasn't getting anywhere with the standards on the suction probe. But there's literally nowhere for me to go there. Um, there's no opening there. Um, I've managed to prise into uh, the chunk of wax there and loosen a segment. So you can see a bit of wax at the, at the bottom of loosened. I'm just trying to get in behind the wax here and just being very careful not to make contact with the bony part of the ear canal, but it was just too impacted. There was no space there. So once again, I um, just have to go back in with the Zolna suction probe. Um, and you can see the wax is it's mobilized but it's lodged and you'll see eventually when I do remove this the patient had a second narrowing he had a bony protrusion called an osteotoma it wasn't extremely prominent but once I remove this wax um, you will see that there was a, another second narrowing so we're trying to get this through two narrowings you can see in the distance the white um, coating of the wax and that's dead keratin so that skin was originally also attached to the ear canal wall and we've managed to mobilize that we've, we've detached the skin from the canal wall uh, and that wax is now adhered to the wax itself that skin is so the wax is now fully mobile, but it's just a matter of bringing it forwards through two narrowings, which is extremely difficult, especially when the wax is really hard and impacted. And again, it was just really lodged there. And I thought, well, let's just see if I can get some forceps on it. Well, it was, nothing else was working, but it, it, there was nothing for me to grip onto. So. I've had no choice. I've had to um, dose the ear again with some sodium bicarbonate drops and really soak that for another five minutes. Back in with the standard zona suction probe. And again, you can see it's a bit blurry now because we're vacuuming some of the drops out of the ear, which um, can coat the distal end of the endoscope, the tip. 
um, and also those hairs are slightly wet so as you insert the endoscope it goes through the hairs and you get a bit of grease onto the um, tip of the camera but it's not affecting me in any way you can still see what I'm doing and I've just got a suction grip there and I'm just slowly trying to bring this forward but at this stage it's unbeknown to me that the patient also had a second narrowing where the wax was also trapped and lodged behind The wax it's, it's really dry and crusted so that although some parts of the wax are softened slightly the core of it the core of this mass of wax is extremely hard and dry still and which makes it very difficult to get a suction grip and, and you can just see at the top there where the suction result probe is you can just see the part of the ear canal you can see where it narrows and the wax is trapped behind that narrowing Again, managed to get a bit of a suction grip just at the base, but the wax is still quite hard and you probably saw there, uh, as I was trying to suction, suction it forwards, the, the plug of wax actually went the opposite way, it went a bit deeper. So this is where you have to be really careful. We don't want to lodge this further in the ear. And uh, as you saw before, the, the hook and the jobs and horn and the forceps weren't really helping me much to, to move this forwards. I'm just trying to rotate this ball of wax. Sometimes when it's a solid piece of wax like this, you want to roll it out of the ear. So if you turn it over and keep spinning it, but obviously forwards towards uh, the entrance of the ear, you can actually roll sometimes a large piece of wax out. But again, it's, uh, it's just too large a piece and the keratin is more visible. So I have uh, rotated this ball of wax, this, this plug of wax by about 45 degrees. So that white keratin initially was facing towards the eardrum and now it's I've managed to rotate it um, to three o'clock, so 45 degrees. Um, sometimes it's like when you're moving furniture, a large sofa and from one room to the other, you, 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 to get it through the door frame, you, you change the angle, um, you flip it over and it helps you get, a, uh, obviously the, the sofa itself, it's larger, wider than the, the door frame, but if you, get it in a different angle, you can still manage to squeeze it through um, and get it through the, the door frame. So again, I just thought, well, there's a little a gap that's appeared in the middle of the wax there, you can see, and I thought, well, let's try and get the ear hook inside of that and bring it forward. So uh, I managed to bring it forward slightly, but not any more than that. And we don't want to be making contact with the bony part. That's so essential. Whenever you go deep in the ear, you just don't want, you want to avoid wherever possible contact with the ear canal. So at this stage, I was kind of losing hope. I thought, well, I'm not really sure I'm going to be able to remove that. And it's very rare. I can't remove wax on, on a single appointment. Extremely rare. I can't really remember the last time I wasn't able to do that. So I thought, well, let's at least get one ear done. If, if, if it is the case that I'm not able to remove that and the patient will have to use drops for a few days in return. So at this stage, I've decided to revert to the right ear. You can see the ear canal is a lot wider, uh, at least two or three times wider um, and I'm just using the and the, the consistency of the wax here it's not as hard it's not as dry it's a bit softer it's not as lodged as well and we're just using um, endoscopic ear suction I managed to remove a big plug of wax there um, and you'll see the whole eardrum there which is intact bit of wax on the posterior canal wall which is probably quite lateral so it's near the entrance and we're just gently peeling that off um, you can just see how easy this ear was is is the procedure's over in a flash um, and then i thought well let's give this one last go the patient had traveled uh, a fair distance so i dosed the ear again this time for 10 minutes and um, typically when i dose the ear for a procedure in the clinic it's only for a couple of minutes all we need to do so the patient's already had drops um, instilled twice on each occasion for five minutes so that's 10 minutes and then on this third occasion I decided to leave it for 10 minutes so that's 20 minutes we, we dosed the ear for um, just in the hope it softens and we want to soften this as much as possible because when it's soft we can squeeze it through um, the narrow uh, the narrow 
aspect of his ear canal. You can just see the narrowing there. You can see the ear canal on the right is coming in and then beyond that it widens out again. And again, I'm just trying to rotate this and kind of almost roll it out. Got a better suction grip there. Now, originally this white keratin that I'm suctioning, that was um, towards the eardrum and now it's facing um, ourselves so that's uh, we've managed to rotate this 180 degrees and by doing that it, sometimes it does help you're kind of rolling it as I said and I've managed to get a good enough suction grip now um, and we're just teasing this through this narrowing and it's still quite a struggle there but I'm managing to just really squeeze it through and now the wax has softened a bit it's we can squash it it's, as we're pulling it it's kind of squashing itself through the narrowing whereas before it was just too hard um, still quite difficult though uh, but not giving up hope and throughout the patient wasn't experiencing any pain or discomfort which is great which allowed us to continue uh, and sometimes in extreme cases like this uh, we have to refer the patient to ENT who can either use um, local anaesthetic so some lidocaine or um, we'll have to do the procedure under a general anaesthetic. And you can see that the tip of this wax now, uh, it's just at the narrowing of parts. It's just at this entrance. I'm still just trying to wriggle this through. And whilst I'm doing the procedure, I, I'm, I'm at this stage confident. I know that we're gonna get this out. I just feel it. I've got that grip. I've got that keen aesthetic feel that this is gonna come out. So um, although it's still a bit of a struggle, um, I really assured the patient that we will get this out today and you won't have to return. So I've got a, a bit of wax out there. And again, if you, if you remember what the right ear looked like, you can just see how narrow this is. And I've got a better suction grip because the wax is now obviously it's been dosed for about 20 minutes and the drops has really acted upon the wax it's really softened it it's made it softer so we can wriggle it through um, and when it's softer as I mentioned it, we can get a better suction grip and again it's just coming through now if I was a, if you're a midwife at this stage you'd be telling um, um, the lady giving birth that we can now see the head of the baby uh, and we're now pulling this through we've got a large piece there and it's all come out in one big mass and you'll now see the second protrusion so just to the left um, the anterior canal wall you can see there's a, a, a prominent um, uh, bony protrusion um, he's got a quite widened and um, anterior recess um, you probably just still still image so you can see there wasn't actually a lot of wax but in this particular client there, there didn't need to be a lot of wax to cause um, a significant blockage because he had a very narrow ear canal i hope you enjoyed that video guys and i hope it um, educated you on the use of different instruments and why some instruments are better than others and some of the limitations of instruments especially when we're deep in the ear and the wax is really hard um, if this is the first time you're watching my youtube channel please do subscribe uh, like the video leave a comment select the bell icon so you get notified as and when i upload new videos and if you're watching on facebook um, similarly please do like follow the page like the video share leave a comment um, speak to you all soon guys, uh, enjoy the rest of your day, bye!